Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. those news people cbs radio for the midwest news radio 78 wbbm chicago the cbs radio mystery theater presents I'm E.G. Marshall. The Encyclopedia Britannica defines the term medicine man as a name loosely applied to any man in a primitive culture who practices sorcery, prophecy, or magic, or who treats illness with charms, drugs, etc. Some 125 years ago, our own Wild West was a primitive society. And we had our own medicine man. This is the story of one such. Thank you, my friend. Clumsy of me to drop that card. Getting to be an old man. Sue, want a bet? Uh, well, maybe I'll try just one more. Splendid. Now, watch carefully. Yeah. I place the three cards on this board face down. Move them in a figure eight. Up, frog them, mix them up. To make sure all is honest and above board, would you like to mix them yourself? <laughs> I reckon I don't have to. Very well. Two reds, one black. Pick the black ten and you win. What is your bet? Uh, well, sir, I'm going to go for broke. Our mystery drama, The Rainbow Man, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When you say bud. You've said a lot of things nobody else can say. When you say bud. Say you care enough to only want the king of bills. There's no other one. There's only something left. Because the king of bills is leading all the rest. When you say fire, why then? You've said it all. And I'm Bush, St. Louis, Missouri. Here we are talking with one of the thousands and thousands of people who bought a Buick this year. This is a Skylark, right? That's right. Pretty, huh? Indeed it is. You want to sit in it? I'll let you for a buck and a quarter. Do you charge to let people sit in your Skylark? Oh, this is a very nice car. Look, I figure when word gets out, people will be lined up for blocks. Hey, you want to honk the horn? Give me a dime. Listen, sir, Buick dealers let people do this for free. They do? Yeah. Well, I think they're missing a good bet. Buick, dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Skokie, Lincolnwood, Morton Grove, Niles, and Gulf. These are suburbs served by the news, a progressive newspaper in a progressive area. Whether your needs be buying, selling, renting, or hiring, the classified columns of the news are your answer. Fifty years of service to the Niles Township community means they are the established newspaper. At Orchard 35000, you're close to one of their trained specialists who will assist you in preparing your ad message and keeping your costs to a minimum. You know what items you have put away and probably will never use again, much of them like new. Why not convert them to cash? Call the Post Leader News at Orchard 35000 to be sure your message is in front of thousands of readers next Thursday. That's the Post Leader News at Orchard 35000. Orchard 35000. Sometimes he just sold snake oil, or whatever the name was that he gave to his magic elixir, which could cure all evils. 
He was a blend of doctor, minister, faith healer, charlatan, salesman, comedian, and entertainer. He was as welcome as he was frequently unwelcome, depending upon how successful he was as a confidence man and unsuccessful as a gambler. For the shell game, or three-card Monty, was usually part of his stock and trade. He was a colorful, delightful, hard-working, lonely, fascinating figure. This one's name was Dr. Phineas Merriweather, and he called himself the Rainbow Man. Now then, Mrs. Moonlight, my fatal phantasmagoria of feline femininity. Still your cries? Oh, I know, I know, I know. With Rainbow gone, nothing is the same. And the vagabond life is not what it once was without her. But what will be, will be. <laughs> like all pussy cats, you are nothing if not practical. You smell the effluvium of that broiling Rocky Mountain trout I caught this afternoon. Very well, my dear. We shall share it together. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. What about that, Mrs. Moonlight? Even in the desert waste, we attract the curious crowd. Or at least one of them? Oh, just a cow hand sloping on out. Saw your fire. Uh, can I join you? My door is always open, my friend. In particular, this one, since it's the whole outdoors. <laughs> I have nothing to fear. Not, not for me, that's for sure. Ain't borrowing no trouble, just carrying enough I don't need no more. Then hobble your pony and join me and Mrs. Moonlight for dinner, such as it is. Well, I don't hanker much to eat, mister, but, uh, might try a little of your coffee. Help yourself, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr., uh... Dr. Phineas Merriweather, sir. Student of the anatomicus humanitas, skeletal articulation, splenetic spontaneity, the cycle of the circulations, the fundamental functions... And the health and vigor of the digestive tract. You can call me Doc. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, hi, Doc. And this is my <laughs> platonic partner on my peripatetic path, Mrs. Moonlight. No ordinary cat, I assure you. <laughs> I reckon if she belongs to you, she couldn't hardly be. <laughs> and wow. This ain't no ordinary coffee. Oh, 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 it's a brew developed by a mistress of the skillet. And every other walk in life... Uh, the lady in question is no longer with us. She is, uh, she was my wife. Oh, I'm mighty sorry you had to lose her. Uh, so am I. Oh, I lost my woman, too. I'm mighty sorry to hear that. You didn't give me a name. Oh, uh, Henry. Henry Thomas. <laughs> well, just plain Hank to, to most people. <laughs> and, uh... You just lost your dear wife? Oh, no, sir. I lost the woman I hoped to make my wife. She found another's charms more to her liking? Oh, no, sir, Doc. It was her father, first of all, found me not to his liking. And the lady? Oh, what can Annie do? I can't offer her nothing. I ain't got nothing. A fine, upstanding fellow like you. You couldn't save enough to support a wife? Make a home for her? Well, it wasn't enough for her daddy. But I was stupid enough to think I could build what I had into some kind of stake he might see his way clear to give his blessing. Ah, a light is beginning to dawn. You thought to increase your worldly wealth by application to the gaming table. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> Always figured I played a right smart game of poker till I got took by Champ Rutledge. Well, of course, I don't know the gentleman you mentioned, but I have a sneaking suspicion I know his breed. Yes, 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 of course, Mrs. Moonlight. Uh, Hank, <laughs> do you believe in divination? I, uh, Mr. Doc, I'd plain have to say I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, first, let's eat some dinner. And then I have a feeling our fates are somehow hopelessly entwined. <laughs> I reckon I must sound pretty near like that old coyote, the way I've been talking on. Oh, not a bit of it, my boy. I asked the questions and I got my answers. 
Mr. Carter Billings runs the biggest cattle stand in this part of the country. He has a daughter beyond compare. She loves you. You love her. But Mr. Billings is taken with a sickness, and somewhere he feels what is best for his daughter is a man with money and position. And that is not you. No, sir, Doc, it sure ain't. You mentioned something about a stake. Well, that was just what I'd put by for my wages. Plus a claim I'd staked on a gold mine never got broke ground on. And those were the assets which were conned away from you in a poker game. Mm, only myself to blame. Five card stud? Yes, sir, Doc. Hey, my boy. What is the name of your little town that you're trying to put behind you? Painted Buttes. Far from here? Oh, no, about five or oh, six miles. <laughs> you see, the moving finger writes... Uh, pardon? I was headed for Saxton Falls, but uh, no one waits there to greet me. Nor do I have anyone there to greet. So, why not Painted Buttes? If you will be my guide and take me there? Oh, Doc, I can't go back there. Mr. Bill, I'm sure ain't going to take me back as ranch hand. There ain't no way I can make a living there other way. I'm not quite so sure, my boy. How'd you like to work for me? You... You? Doing what? That's just what I'm about to explain to you. But that's plain dishonest. I mean, that's that's like, uh, like stealing. Now, 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 let us weigh that statement carefully in the balance. What do you consider stealing to be? Well, uh, taking something from somebody without him knowing you're taking it. The way Champ Rutledge took you at the poker table? Uh, don't answer that for a moment. So far, we have only one definition, and that's too simple. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand, Mr. Uh, uh, Doc. How can I explain? Where to begin? Ah, with myself, I suppose. The business I've been in all my life. Illusion. Now you see it, now you don't. Is that in itself dishonest? Well, uh, what business were you in? Show business. The theater. Carnivals. You were an actor, fella? Latterly, I was billed as Dr. Thunder and his rainbow. My wife. And my joy in living. We were a feature in every carnival in the East and across this wide country as far as St. Joseph, Missouri. Our supreme triumph. The moment of glory when that resplendent woman... Beauteous is the natural phenomenon I named her after, the rainbow. Stepped into the cabinet, spangles ablaze in the dancing stage lights, with a smile that outshone her glitter, and to the audience's amazement and titillation, I sawed her, not in half, but in three parts, head, torso, and her exquisite legs. You did what? Sheer illusion, my dear boy. The hand is quicker than the eye, the magic of misdirection. The juxtaposition of seeming equal masses which are only optical anamorphoses. Uh, uh oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Doc, now, I don't know about being a, uh, what did you call it? A shell, my boy. You know, and, and all I gotta do is, uh, bend up one corner of the black card when it drops on the ground? Showing it to everyone around while my back is turned. So they think I got a way of knowing it when you shuffle it in with the two red cards. An apt pupil. Exactly. And then take the money I give you and bet on it. Yeah, but, uh... How do you know if you give me money, I won't just take on out and keep going? Because, son, I have an unerring eye for an honest face. Hmm, I don't know about that. Still seems kind of dishonest to me. Does not the good book itself say an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth? Oh, I guess so. Then isn't it he... fair and square to swindle a man of Champ Rutledge's stripe just as he did you? Well, no, I, I don't know for sure he did swindle me. Trust me, my boy, you were swindled. And I intend to help you recapture what is your own. Mister, why would you want to help me? It is not you I help, or myself, but others... What in tarnation does that mean? Once I pursued my multifaceted career in the sordid scrambling after gain. I wanted to buy a world and lay it at the feet of the woman I loved. And all too soon my beloved was snatched from me. And I was left alone to ponder. 
Was it in punishment for my obsession with the world's goods? I don't know. I only know I consider my function and my call now to help the poor, the dispossessed, the downtrodden, and the outmaneuvered. Go back to Painted Buttes tonight, my boy, so no one will ever know that you were away. Tomorrow I shall be there. And if you want to join me, join me. Just remember one thing, son. From this day forward, till I give you the nod, we never saw each other any time, anywhere. Ah, there never was a night, moon up or moon down, that I don't ache for you, Rainbow. Why did you leave me behind? Yes, yes, Mrs. Moonlight, I know, I know. She's gone. Time for you and me to take the little sleep. The big one is not scheduled for us yet. The future is still ordained. I wonder what it holds. Prophet, master of illusion or an instrument of Satan's dark forces. Who and what is Dr. Phineas Merriweather? Was there ever the wife he dreams of? Or was she sheer delusion? Is he a wizard and the cat his familiar spirit? Or is he just a sad old man, his brains addled by the loss of someone dear to him. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Sorry, sir, but uh, we don't serve breakfast on this flight. No, I brought my own from McDonald's. You, you're the one. With breakfast, you can take out and eat anywhere. In the boardroom. Yes, sir. Yeah. Break out of that morning I have my McDonald's well, breakfast in class. No. Somebody here eating breakfast? Yeah. delicious Egg McMuffin. I send Charles out for my Egg McMuffin on Tuesday mornings. Madam, your muffin. Thank you, Charles. Or fresh scrambled eggs and sausage with a toasted English muffin. As far as possible from my boss. Or hotcakes and sausage with butter and syrup. My dark room while I'm developing my film. I smell hotcakes and sausage. Don't open the door. Breakfast any place. Under the spreading chestnut tree. From McDonald's. At the laundromat. What a tasty way to get your clothes clean. At McDonald's. Every morning. I'm having scrambled eggs and sausage right here in the carpool on the way to work. Something. And I've just been found out. Mm. When someone mentions carpet or rug cleaning, the first name that comes to mind is Magicist. Hi, this is Carmelita Pope, reminding you that Magicist also sells rugs. Magicist carries a nice selection of colors and styles, all priced to satisfy the tightest of budgets. In addition to bargains and new rugs, Magicist also carries a selection of unclaimed rugs. You can find a truly outstanding buy in an unclaimed rug and finally afford to cover the rec room or basement floor. Magicist also stocks bathroom carpeting and can assist you in fitting your van or camper to a tee. When you're in the market for a rug, the first name that should come to mind is Magicist. For the location of the Magicist rug sales room nearest you, see the white pages. Chicago phones call 378-8600. Master Charge and Bank AmeriCard welcome. Come clean with Magicist and get your whole house magic. In the 1850s, Painted Buttes wasn't much of a town. More than it is now, for it doesn't exist anymore. But a century and a half ago, it was all that a territory comprising a quarter of Colorado had to gather in and kick up a little dust. One street, the bank, the tonsorial parlor, the hotel, the saloon, the local assaying office, the general store and post office, the blacksmith and delivery stable. And on rare occasions, a special attraction like today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
Ladies and gentlemen of this fair metropolis of painted buttes, your kind attention, if you please. Allow me to introduce myself. Dr. Phineas J. Meriwether, practitioner of the ancient art of restorative controls. Health is wealth. Health is king. And what snake in this Garden of Eden threatens you most, ladies and gentlemen? The common cold. But... By great good fortune, I bring you relief. This little bottle I hold in my hand. My friends, while roaming the peripatetic wastes of Patagonia, a region of our good neighbors in the hemisphere of the South, the other Americas, I was struck by the fact that no one there, in spite of the inclement climate, knew what a cold was. On study, I found that the Eurofrigus root was indigenous to their culture and that from this root could be brewed a liquid compound of such miraculous versatility in curing not only the cold but also every other form of invasion bacilli and bacteria used to erode the human condition. Here it is, available for only one dollar a bottle. Sixteen ounces which should be worth their weight in gold since they are in such limited supply. But, but, ladies and gentlemen, I would not ask you to try something like this without some independent and unbiased proof. Are you, sir, young man in the third row? You mean me? I do indeed, sir. Would you care to step up here for one moment and join me on the wagon? Well, I don't rightly know. I mean, uh... I ain't looking for no medicine. Well, if you will pardon me for saying so, my trained physician's eye has noticed that your eyes are red-rimmed and affected by ruin. And I have been conscious of your heavy cough. Cough, Hank? <coughs> ah, you see, ladies and gentlemen, this young man, healthy specimen as he seems, <coughs> is flirting with death. Now, sir, <coughs> that's splendid, but don't overdo, Hank, don't overdo. Now, sir, I don't know your name, but uh, let me offer you a spoonful of my peerless placebo. <coughs> I don't know that I can, <coughs> I can afford to spend money on... A man <coughs> as sorely afflicted as you, my dear boy, money is no object. <coughs> Rather than see you suffer, take this bottle as a gift <coughs> and this first spoonful as a promise of things to come. There we go. Now, now. Stop a moment and allow the full unfolding of the healing heat to penetrate. And now. Now, sir. I dare you to cough. Well, I sure don't feel like... But try. Just try. Um, I can't, doctor. I just purely can't. There you are. <laughs> Ah, citizens of Painted Buttes, you see the dramatic powers of rainbow liquor, the elixir supreme. One dollar a bottle, ladies and gentlemen, but remember, the supply is limited, so first come, first serve. Good day, Sheriff. Uh, howdy there, Mr. Rutledge. Care to join me in a drink? Well, I'm a little early in the day. Oh, come on, Sheriff. Billy up to the bar. It's on me. Bartender, give the sheriff some red eye and a beer chaser. On the house. <laughs> it's gonna hit me right. <laughs> uh, what's all the excitement up the street? Oh, just one of them traveling medicine men selling something's good for what ails you. Calls it rainbow liqueur. He just get into town. Rolled in early this morning, a big fancy wagon, a team of good looking horses. <laughs> Seems like business is good with him. Come from the east? That's right. I'm mighty obliged to you, Mr. Rutledge, for wetting my whistle. Here's looking at you. <clears throat> well, thanks, Sheriff. As soon as you gulp that down, why don't you and me mosey up and take a look at our visitor? Ow! Well, why? You want me to run him out of town, Mr. Rutledge? <laughs> if he's as well healed as he seems to be, not for a moment. Simplest 
game in the world, gentlemen, and how can you lose? Look Little at the three-card money, say, huh? Must be a money, slicker. That game's money. never honest. Still, I might take a little flutter. <laughs> he couldn't fool you, Mr. Rutledge. No. But while he was busy trying to, we might just pull a little wool over his eyes. Ah. Let's just see what's going on. Well, aren't you going to bet again, young sir? Well, looks like my luck's run out. <laughs> Keep losing. Yes, but you win two to my one. Luck's bound to turn again. Bound to turn. Just let me shuffle the cards. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, well, I'll pick that up. Oh, uh, thank you, my boy. Thank you. It's clumsy of me. I'm getting to be an old man. Did you see what, what Hank did? I made a corner on the black card. So he knows which it is. Uh, he's learning since I took him for his shirt. All right, I put them face down, move them in a figure eight, hop frog them, just to make sure all is honest and above board. Would you like to mix them around yourself? <laughs> no, I reckon I don't have to. Very well. Two red tens, one black ten. Pick the black and you win. What is your bet, sir? Well, sir, I'm going to go for broke. Put your money down. Five in that stack and one, two, three, four, five. Ten in all. The gentleman bids on the middle card. Anyone else care to bet? A friendly game open to all. What are your odds, sir? Two to one, sir. More than fair. Would you care to take a flyer? I believe I will. I'll wager fifty dollars if you can cover it. A right heavy bet, sir. But I think I can. Which card do you select, sir? For the first time, I find myself on the same side as Hank Thomas. Here, the middle one. I am closing the betting. It is quite heavy, and while I like to win, I don't like to see people lose. Uh, except within reason. So, the magic card, and it is... Oh, huh? Red. The Ten of Diamonds. Such a pity. I'm afraid you'll lose, sir. Will you play again? Champ? Uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Rutledge, you were oh, taken. If... Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Not for the moment. That exhausts all cash I had in my pocket. Besides, this is not my game. But you seem like a gambling man. I have devoted a large part of my life to it, yes. Are you in town till tomorrow? Oh, yes. My name is Champ Rutledge. Perhaps you'd care to join me in a poker game tonight. I suggest it's something you shouldn't miss if you are a gambler. I am, sir. The name is Dr. Phineas Merriweather, and I should be proud to join you. Where? Why don't you meet me at the hotel as my guest for dinner? Oh, I feel I should be the host. No, I... please. I own the hotel and the saloon. Be my pleasure. Then at the hotel. And at what time? Shall we make it 7? Uh, no, 6.30. By the time we finish dinner, the sun will be down. I shall be there, sir. Now, if you would excuse me. Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. Now we must turn from fun and games to the world of trade. The lure of the merchandise marts which I have combed the world to bring you, ladies. Cottons from India, silks from mysterious China, and other bolts of material such as you can you bet on had the corner turned up just a, like the one Hank did. Now, how could you... One of the oldest switches in the world. You mean he cheated you? That's right. And you're going to stand still for that? A little bait, my slow-witted mentor. To turn the tables, to have the biter bite. Only one thing concerns me. Oh, uh, what's that, Mr. Rutledge? Why should Hank Thomas be in league with that old swindler? I think maybe we better have him at that poker game tonight, too. Uh, Doc. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, all right. What is it, my boy? Uh, uh, can I talk to you uh, here in the wagon just a moment? Um... Uh, just a moment. Uh, run the goods through your fingers, ladies. Feel the richness and the allure. How can you resist them? And uh, ladies, forgive me for a moment. 
Hank, I told you we should not appear to know each other. What is it? Well, uh, two things. Why did you accept the idea of playing poker with that no-good champ Rutledge? We can discuss that later. What is the other? Oh, uh, it's Annie. Uh, she... She wants to see you real bad, Doc. Well, I'm here. Can't she come right up and buy like the other women? Oh, no, she don't want to buy nothing, Doc. It's, um... Well, it's it's what you are and what your name is she needs. Um, I mean, uh, she asked me to tell you she's got to talk to you as a doctor. I can't thank you enough, Doctor, for taking the time to come see my father. Well, perhaps I will be of less use to him than to you. I don't understand. Time enough for that. Oh, in the West, it's so difficult to get a doctor. And those we do have don't seem to know what's the matter with my daddy. Miss Billings, I don't know that you can count on me to be any better. Well, not from what Hank told me. He thinks you're pretty wonderful. Does he now? And that's the way you feel about Hank, I take it, hmm? I can't talk about that. Daddy made a marriage contract between me and Champ Rutledge. That's the way it has to be, I reckon. But here we are at the ranch. Right now, nothing matters except my father. Uh, what do you think, Doctor? Mr. Billings... I think I should tell you, first of all, that I am not a doctor. Huh? Uh, what are you doing here? Some of us live in a halfway house, Mr. Billings, and have the worst of two worlds. I am one of those, and I beg you to listen to me now as one who is about to join the shadows in order to protect the ones who are to live and breathe and have hope to enjoy the other. The world of life. With every device of misdirection and the ability to juggle fantasy and reality, when are we going to believe Dr. Phineas J. Merriweather? When does he lie, confuse, and when does he tell the truth? Maker of dreams, the Rainbow Man. Let's follow him to the end of that rainbow, if there is one, when I return with Act Three. When you say but, you say a lot of things nobody else can say. When you say but, you say you care enough to only want the king of beers. Anheuser-Busch, headquarters, St. Louis, Missouri. Well, sir, I see you're one of the many people who bought a new Buick Century. That's right. Boy, you want to talk about roomy and comfortable. Just take a look in there. Go ahead. But you have, uh, you have curtains hanging in your car. Yes, and wallpaper, too. Well, why's that? Well, we like the Century so much, we decided to sell a house and uh, live in it. Huh. Well, doesn't that get just a little crowded? Oh, I suppose it might after a while, but, uh, well, we aren't home that much. Oh. Yeah, we got a little Skyhawk up north. Buick. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Take a close look at your next auto or appliance repair bill. What you'll probably see is something like this. $12 for parts, $22 for labor. True Value Hardware Stores can help you cut those labor charges down to nothing. They offer a True Test 11-piece standard or metric socket set for just $15.50 each. So you can start doing those auto and appliance repairs yourself. The True Test standard socket set includes seven sockets, a spark plug socket, an extension, a reversible ratchet wrench, and a case. The metric set has nine sockets, a ratchet wrench, and a case. Counting the price of a True Test socket set, plus the other parts and tools you need, you can match the mechanic's price for a tune-up. The next time your car needs a tune-up, all you'll have to buy is the parts. Let True Value Hardware Stores help you save money on home and auto repairs. Get a True Test 11-piece standard or metric socket set for just $15.50 each at participating True Value Hardware Stores. This is WBBM Chicago. With this story, 
story, we walk uncharted paths. The byways of whim, of unreality, mixed with down-to-earth problems. With a strange man of a thousand facets and incredible tricks. A man of good or evil. Which, we'll have to go back to the story to find out. Who are you? I told you, I am Dr. Phineas Smith. I don't mean that. I mean, what are you? A man that talks about halfway houses and the dead as if they lived and the living as if they were already dead? What are you? Some kind of preacher? A little of that, but mainly a simple medicine man. A bit of a charlatan who once was a prince of illusion. And enough words to talk the hind leg off a donkey. I'm looking for a cure. Get out of here. One word, sir, before I leave, if I may. You have a daughter. Annie. She loves a young man who loves her in return. Why have you torn them apart? Uh, since you have already consigned me to the grave, you should know as well as I. This ranch, this spread, you think I own it? No. Long since mortgaged to champ Rutledge. Poker. And other games of chance. I am that most unfortunate of men. A gambler without any luck. And I, if I may borrow another hat, am what should be supposed to be the most fortunate of men. A gambler with all the luck. Or at least the ability to win at will. What does that mean? Have you a pack of cards handy? <laughs> In this house... Always. Eh? In the drawers. I don't want to touch them. Take them out yourself, if you will. I have the cards. Now, now what? Uh... There is no wager. But let us suppose we were cutting this deck for a thousand dollars. Yes? Shuffle them. Very good. Now, I riffle them once. So, you cut first. Ah, a jack. Very good. Higher than the probabilities. Now, I cut. Thus. The ace of hearts? Yeah, it's pure luck. Oh, no, Mr. Billings. I will cut you an ace every time. But I intend to win back your ranch. For the man who is best equipped to run it, young Hank Thomas. And because I want your promise that if I do, you will leave the ranch to your daughter and Hank Thomas once they marry and give your daughter your blessing. You don't ask much, do you? Only a fair return for what I'm trying to give. Well, how do you expect to accomplish all this? I'm playing poker with Mr. Champ Rutledge tonight. Uh, you intend to cheat him? I intend to let him cheat himself. For a change. Just as he has cheated you and Hank and God knows how many more. The man, sir, is a card sharp but an amateur one. I've taken steps to make him think me the same. That's why, though you may not be able to give your daughter a suitable dowry, your son-in-law, if it's Hank Thomas, will bring it to you instead. And are you trying to tell me, Dr. Merriweather, that... My father is going to change his mind? What I'm aiming to have him do. I can't believe it. There really is a chance I I might not have to marry Champ Rutledge. There sure is. And now, my dear, I reckon we're just about back to my wagon. How can I thank you, Doctor? My daddy seems so much better after seeing you. I hope his mind has been relieved at least. I take it kindly of you to bring me home, Miss Billings. Doc, where have you been? I got a... Uh... Oh, Annie. If uh, you two will excuse me, I've got to see that Mrs. Moonlight gets fed. Hank? Now, no you starting up anything again, Annie. You, you better head for home. Would you help me down just a minute? I think the horse might have a loose shoe. Well, sure, but I could check... Hank. The... Please help me down. Oh. Yes, Annie. <laughs> you didn't have to lift me. Well, you don't hardly weigh more than a feather. 
Is that the only way you think of me? Oh, uh, don't now. I, I mean, I... Yes? I, yes, what? Yes, what do you mean? Annie, I gotta let go of you or... I swear I never will. That's a little better. Why should you? You know why. Kiss me. I ain't got the right. Maybe there's a chance you might. That's some of what I got to tell you. Only first... Oh, Hank. Please, kiss me first. Hank? Oh. Oh. I'll see you. Raise your five. Uh, meet the raise and add ten. I'm staying. Sheriff, Billy, you out? Okay. Let's make it interesting. I'll bump it 50. I'll see. Mr. Doctor, or whoever you are, you want challenge? Nope. I fold. Two pair. Tens and threes. Read them and weep. Well, <laughs> I got lucky. Filled my straight to the middle. Eight through queen. Not on my deal, you couldn't. Beg pardon? Uh, well, forget it. Whose deal is it now? Sheriff Cuts. My deal. You're being very lucky, Hank Thomas. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Uh, kind of a pleasant change, huh? Not from my seat. I don't like the way the cards are going. The whimsy of the lady with the cornucopia. The shifting winds of chance. What brings us all here, after all? All right, ten is high, Doc. Your bet. I'll venture a dollar. I'll raise you two. Two to the dock. Seven spades to studs. Big king to the sheriff. Seven of diamonds to Hank. And the dealer. Hey, 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 lucky strike. Ace of spades. I'm running far behind. Looks like my makeup hand. All right, I'll go $50. Who's in? I'll cover the 50. I'll fold. Up. I'll stick. So, four in the pot. Third card. Seven to the dock. Deuce of nothing to studs. You're a deuce, huh, Doc? <laughs> Queen of spades to Hank. And a big ace of hearts to the dealer. Still high. All right, I'll up the ante. This round costs till it hurts. Make it a thousand. I'll cover you. Ooh, <laughs> I'm out. I'll see you. Raise you everything I got. Seven, nine thousand. Nine thousand fifty-five. Well, suddenly a big game. I'll see you and double that. I think I'll fold. Meet your bet. Double it again. Where are you getting the money to bet? What do you care? You see the color of it, you match it. Ain't that many chips left. I'll give you my IOU. I'll see you and raise. Uh, no paper at these high stakes, unless the paper is valid. You suggesting my signature or my word ain't bond? I'm not suggesting anything, except that we keep this game honest. <laughs> That's for laughs coming from you. I'm out of it, sir. And you're the dealer. Okay, Hank Thomas. What do you want to cover? The mortgage to the Billings Ranch. You kidding there ain't that much money involved. Enough so you can't foreclose. The rest you'll get fair and square. Okay. Studs, here's the key to the safe. Go fetch it. And everybody just keep his hands nice and easy on the table. Okay. Here's your mortgage, free and clear. Let's get this over with. Everybody witness? I'll, uh... Hold the deed. Well, what good it'll do you. Well, how come you're not the big winner, Mr. Card Sharp? Scared we had tabs on you? One little mistake you made about me, Mr. Rutledge. 
I don't play cards for a living. It's fortunate that you didn't plan to be a winner tonight. Let's get to the showdown. Okay. You seeing me? Name of the game. Spade flush. Ace high. Good enough? <laughs> Not quite. Full house. Ace is up. Read them and weep. Except that you're missing an ace. Two pairs is all I see. What? Wait a moment. Somebody's cheating. You mean that missing ace of clubs you thought you had in the hole? What do you mean, thought I had? The one you dealt off the bottom? How did you know? Uh, I had it there since the beginning. Ace in the hole. It reads a deuce to me. I just everyone hold it. You're not getting away with this. You mean this is a town you can't have an honest deal in? I mean, this is my town. I run it my way. Not anymore, champ. Now I'm off the hook as far as you're concerned. Doc Merriweather here helped me take this town back. Nobody tells me I'm through. How'd you get here, Billings? That uh, was my suggestion. I thought he ought to see you for what you were before... Before what? Before I died... Thank God someone was wise enough to show me the truth. Only I got the draw and I'm cutting out. Nobody's going to stop me. Have you ever heard of nemesis, Mr. Rutledge? Get out of my way, con man. You've caused enough trouble. You want to find yourself dead? As it happens, yes. We're going together. <laughs> you had a gun and... I didn't want to be the instrument, but someone had to lower the boom. Uh, oh, Doc. Doc, are, are you all right? Oh, I couldn't be better, son. Wouldn't want it to be any other way in the world. You're bleeding. What can we do for you? Just see those two kids get married. And all I could wish them is that they have a time together like me and Rainbow had. We sure will make a try. It's a lovely world, you know. If we just keep it that way. And now that I'm not going to have it anymore, I'd like to leave it that way. Doc, I ain't going to let you do it. I wouldn't have you stop it if you could. Rainbow is waiting for me. And that lovely world beyond. To be united with the one you love. What else is better in the world? Or the world to come? The saddest tragedy is to be alone. <laughs> medicine man, or anyone who hopes with some magic panacea to cure the ills of the world, has to fail, just as those who depend on him are doomed to the same fate. But the effort is always worth the risk, no matter what the result. At the worst, there is some gain, if not to everyone, to the lucky few. Count Annie and Hank among those, and this story has not been in vain. I'll be back shortly. I want that sinus medicine. Mm, a headache tablet? No, the sinus medicine that relieves headache and congestion, internal sinus pressure, and post-nasal drip. You mean sign-off? Exactly. Compare sign-off to any other sinus tablet. You'll find no sinus tablet you can buy relieves more symptoms. When you take sign-off tablets, you get a full dose of pure aspirin plus a powerful sinus drainer to help sinus pain while you drain. And for the fastest known form of sinus congestion relief, there's sign-off sinus spray. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. -F. Sign-off. Take when needed, only as directed. Always insist on sign-off. The sinus medicine that relieves headache and congestion, 
internal sinus pressure and post-nasal drip. You mean sign-off tablets. Exactly. Sign-off, the sinus medicines in the bright red box. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. You may feel it's an embarrassing subject, but since one out of every three people suffers hemorrhoid symptoms at some time, you should know about Preparation H. Preparation H gives prompt, temporary relief from occasional pain and itch in many cases. But Preparation H does more. Actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues caused by inflammation. With so many having the problem, it's comforting to know that Preparation H helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues. Ointment or suppositories. Use only as directed. He was born into poverty, but his ruthlessness and burning ambition were to lead him into a dazzling world of wealth and passion. He was Cosmas Berlotus, young hero of a bold new novel by Nicholas Gage, The Berlotus Fortune. This sweeping bestseller follows Cosmas from boardrooms to bedrooms as he forges a vast dynasty that stretches from sun-drenched Greek fishing villages to fast-moving capitals around the world. For stunning entertainment, read The Berlotus Fortune, a bantam book where paperbacks are sold. As I said somewhere earlier, Painted Buttes is a ghost town today, haunted by what ghosts I wouldn't know. Although Hank and Annie and her father, who died quietly in his time, are buried there. And in the quiet of sundown, may whisper together in the breeze. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Jada Rowland, Robert Dryden, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Smith of Rhodesia has reportedly accepted the principle of black majority rule. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. In Dar es Salaam, Secretary of State Kissinger met with Tanzanian President Julius Nyeri, who quoted Kissinger as saying Smith has accepted the principle of a transfer of power to Rhodesia's black majority in 18 months to two years. Nyeri said he is no longer gloomy about the prospects of Kissinger succeeding in his mission to help achieve a peaceful solution to the African crisis. Kissinger has now arrived in Zaire to discuss his efforts with President Mobutu. In Rhodesia, the ruling white minority government is discussing a power transfer plan and will make public its position on Friday. In a champagne toast at the White House Tuesday evening, President Ford told visiting President William Talbert of Liberia that both leaders agree on the need for action to prevent more bloodshed in southern Africa. Talbert said he welcomes Kissinger's current mission. More news in a moment. You're driving to work in a traffic jam. You perk up as things open up. Then you see you're only doing three miles an hour. You perk back down. Even the smiling face on the bumper sticker in front of you doesn't look like it's smiling anymore. Oh, you know, you need breakfast at McDonald's. Get up, get out of there. Make your getaway. Make McDonald's your breakfast stop before you start your day. Your day with McDonald's breakfast sandwich, egg McMuffin, made with Canadian bacon. Try our steaming hotcakes and sausage, topped with syrup and butter, or our fresh eggs, scrambled in butter and served with sausage. You'll love them all. <laughs> you, you're the one. Don't need that morning tussle. You, you're the one. Need a break before you hustle. <laughs> you're on your way again. Oh, you, you feel great. Oh, oh, oh. At McDonald's.
On the campaign trail, Republican vice presidential nominee Bob Dole ripped into Jimmy Carter's recent statement about income taxes. Barry Serafin has a report. At the Ohio Republican convention tonight, Dole charged that Jimmy Carter is trying to wriggle out of his recent statements that he would raise taxes for families above the twelve to $15,000 a year level. Dole vowed to remind Carter of those statements every day until the election. Over and over again, Dole portrayed Carter as flip-flopping on the issues. My record is there. President Ford's record is there. Senator Mondale's record is there. And all we have from Governor Carter are promises that change by the day. Promises, promises, promises. Tax and tax and spend and spend and elect and elect. That's his philosophy. That's what he's told us. At one point, Dole said bluntly that Carter ought to quit granting interviews or, quote, he ought to start telling the truth. Barry Serafin, CBS News, Columbus, Ohio. Carter today outlined the first of a series of government reorganization proposals he plans to offer. Carter said he wants to take all the federal government's energy programs and four agencies and consolidate them into one cabinet-level energy agency. Jody Powell, Carter's new secretary, told reporters of some other ideas the candidate has. We've also uh, done some work on the some 1,267 advisory commissions, which now cost the American taxpayers $52 million a year, uh, most of which are totally... Uh, dysfunctional and unnecessary, and we will be addressing uh, that issue and many of the others uh, with, with specificity. House Speaker Carl Albert's top aide tonight lost his attempt to succeed his boss in Congress. In a Democratic primary runoff in Oklahoma, Albert A. Charles Ward was defeated by State Senator Wes Watkins. Representative Henry Helstowski, who's awaiting trial on bribery charges, won his race for renomination in a special Democratic primary runoff in New Jersey. Helstowski defeated State Assemblyman Brian Baer. Helstowski and three of his aides are charged with taking bribes from South American aliens. A bomb exploded Tuesday night in the New York Hilton Hotel, where Governor Rafael Hernandez Colon of Puerto Rico was being honored at a banquet 21 floors below. There were no injuries. A caller to the New York Post said a Puerto Rican group known as the FALN claims responsibility. The group has claimed responsibility for other bombings in New York in recent years. Now this. A bad slip of the tongue for Senator Walter Mondale on the campaign trail. The Democratic vice presidential nominee was in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where he said the people want a president named Jimmy Ford. Realizing the blunder, Mondale said, Jimmy, I didn't mean it. Let me try again. Jimmy Carter. This is Doug Poling, CBS News. We're those news people. CBS Radio for the Midwest. News Radio 78. WBBM Chicago.